Do you find that when you're small? Hi everyone, welcome back. So today the thing that I want to make is a vinyl or faux leather bag. I don't know about you, but I am a huge fan of novelty faux leather or vinyl bags. I really, really like them. I have a small collection of them and I do make and buy them. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how easy it really is to make it and how cheap it can actually be. Instead of spending hundreds of dollars, which, you know, if you want to support a small business then why not but if you can make it at home for cheaper than that then why not so I don't know if any of you who like purses or bags or whatever you want to call them have seen the recently released Kate Spade gingerbread house purse I love it but I don't want to spend over a hundred dollars for a bag and like I said I'm more someone who's prone to buying small business bags rather than bigger companies I mean don't get me wrong I would definitely buy that bag however I thought it would be cool to make something that is Christmas themed and show you guys how to do it for cheaper so let me show you the materials that you're gonna need to make the bag and then we'll talk about the actual bag that I am going to make and it is going to be like I said ginger gingerbread or Christmas theme. Okay, so the materials that you will need to make a faux leather bag is faux leather. Let's talk about that material really quickly. I'll just gloss over it. You can go to Joann's and buy something that's called marine vinyl and it is about $30 a yard, but you will never need to buy a yard of marine vinyl to make a purse ever. The most I've ever bought for a specific bag is a quarter of a yard and that's pretty cheap. And even if you bought half of a yard, you could use a 40 to 50% off coupon and get it even cheaper. So this is the marine vinyl that Joann's has in stock and it looks like this on the back it is pretty thick and it is a faux leather marine vinyl and I have blue brown yellow white and black if you live somewhere that's closer to a larger city you don't specifically have to go to Joann's I know that at specific stores in San Francisco there are fabric district areas where you can get vinyl fabric for pretty cheap you can also order vinyl fabric off of Etsy and I have bought vinyl fabric like that before but they do come in smaller sheets unless you want to pay more and I think the smaller sheets are pretty cool if you want to add just an element to a bag or a pocket or something like that as opposed to buying multiples of that sheet if that's all that you have access to depending on the person that you're buying it from you can get it for two dollars a sheet or even less than that and sometimes depending on the seller you can get it for free for the shipping so it won't cost you that much however the other day I was in the Dollar Tree and I came across faux leather and I was so surprised I could not believe it I know that the Dollar Tree now is the dollar 25 tree and I think a dollar 25 for vinyl is not that bad so it is 11.75 inches by 20 inches and they come in these little boxes like this it's a dollar 25 and and the sheets are this big it is a nice sized <laughs> rectangle and again like I said they're only $1.25 so I am going to be using the Dollar Tree vinyl faux leather fabric that they do sell again like I said at the Dollar Tree but make sure when you go to the Dollar Tree if you are wanting to do this with me that you are buying the one that specifically says faux leather because they do also carry something else that is called faux vinyl and that is for cry cut or cricket or however it's pronounced I'm not sure boards and if you are someone who does cricket then check out the Dollar Tree they have a lot of that stuff there but for today I am working with the faux leather so what I'm gonna be making is a bag of course so that's what you'll need from the dollar store I have four boxes so that cost me five dollars or four boxes of vinyl and it's gonna cost me less than that to make this bag the things that you specifically need for the purse if you are going to make one yourself is the faux leather from the dollar store as well as some fabric to line the inside of your bag if you don't want to line your bag you don't have to line your bag however I am going to however there is also a Dollar Tree option for fabric so they sell fabric at the dollar store and it is 18 inches by 21 inches and they look like this I bought a bee one and a honeycomb one I'm not gonna use these specifically today for my bag just because I couldn't find one that was Christmas themed that I wanted today but 
They also sell fabric quarters at Joann's for about $2 and they also sell fabric quarters at Walmart for I think the same price, $1.25 to $2. So if you wanted something specifically Christmas like I got, then you would want to buy that. But there is an option for fabric if you want to sew at the dollar store and these are only $1.25. So to just reiterate what you need for this specific bag, faux leather, fabric for a lining, and now you also need a zipper. You can buy a zipper from Joann's. You can go to thrift stores and buy zippers for 75 cents, okay? They sell them either in the packages and they are old, so be careful, test them out before you put them on something that you worked so hard on. I've done that <laughs> and the zipper breaks. So, you know, just be careful and wary of the ones that you're buying, but if you're only spending 25 cents, yard sales, estate sales, they sell zippers. You don't have to spend four dollars for a zipper if you don't want to or you could space out your project buy the things that you need and then use a 40 percent off coupon at joann's or hobby lobby or michael's or wherever you want to shop the last thing that you will need aside from the strap is these are magnetic snaps and they are for your bags that is what you need and i'm so sorry that i went on this huge rant of what you'll need and the things that you could do but i really want you guys to be able to do these things and not have to worry about the price because i am definitely someone who likes to do a lot of things but it's expensive and so I have to find my way around making things that aren't gonna cost me too much and why can't I own a bag that looks similar to Kate Spade's bag without breaking my bank to do it so come on with me and let me show you exactly what I'm gonna do so for the pieces that you'll need to make the specific bag that I am making and all of the pieces will be linked down below as a downloadable if you want to download the ones that I have is a 10 by 8 inch square this is how large the bag is going to be for me and then when I cut it I am going to add a fourth to a half inch seam allowance you'll need to cut two pieces of those I have a four by two inch piece that is going to attach the straps of the bag you'll need to cut two of these a four by three inch rectangle that you will need to fold in half and to attach the bag to the little gingerbread man that I'm going to add and then two pieces of a gingerbread man this is the one in the size that I am going to be using but I am not gonna stop there I am gonna make him a little spooky so he is going to be a skeleton gingerbread and the last thing that you will need is an exacto blade you can use a box cutter you can use an exacto blade or you can use scissors the choice is yours if you are someone who is smaller please get a parent's help when using an exacto blade or a box cutter because you can very easily cut yourself and if you are using that make sure to cut what you are cutting on a cutting board or a self-healing mat because you you do not want to accidentally cut through your table or anything like that. So let's go cut stuff out and start making this bag. I'm just going to be cutting out the pieces of the bag uh, with a little bit of seam allowance. The downloadable links will be in the description box below with the exact measurements that you are going to need. These are fabric clips that I use. They are best when you are working with vinyl so you don't make additional holes. And I talk about that a little bit more later on in the video. All I'm doing here is tracing out the exact pieces that I need to cut out for the skeleton that I'm adding to the gingerbread. And when you do cut this out with an X-Acto knife, please be careful because they are very tiny pieces and you do not want to cut yourself. I'm gonna mark with a pen just freehand the pieces that you need for the skeleton and the pelvic bone and cut those out as well. Okay, 
so before we start sewing there are a few little things that I want to tell you about if you've never worked with vinyl or faux leather so you want to make sure that when you're sewing you're sewing exactly where you want it to be because you will see the needle imprint or holes if you mess up it's not a super big deal but like I said you will see them and if you are someone that's finicky about that type of stuff obviously you don't want to see that so a thing that you can do or buy like I showed you just a moment ago are these little clips instead of using pin needles to hold your things together before you sew them they are really good you can buy a box of them on Amazon for pretty cheap I will link down below if I can find the exact one that I bought I think I bought this entire 10 right here for about five or six dollars you can buy them from Joann's they're a little bit more expensive there I bought mine on Amazon and they were not as expensive so I will link down below if I can find the exact ones that I bought for you there and if I can't then I'll link some other ones but these are a better option than using actual pins especially with the faux leather being a little bit thicker it would be a little bit easier to use regardless the second thing that I want to talk to you about is your foot for your sewing machine you can use a regular presser foot but the faux leather may slip it depends on how quickly you sew so when you sew this stuff you do want to take it slowly because again like I said it messing up is something you kind of want to avoid when it comes to sewing this type of stuff because you will see it if you have designs on your faux leather it's less likely that you'll see the holes but Again, like I said, going slowly on the sewing machine is going to be your best friend. Now, if you find that when you're sewing, it's still slipping a little bit, regardless of how fast or slow you're going, you can take some scotch tape or painter's tape, whichever type of tape that you have, and you want to kind of like unstick it a little bit. So put it on your clothing, put it on your pants, whatever, to make it not be as tacky. And then you want to stick that to the bottom of your sewing machine so that it's kind of like a grip for when you are sewing. Another option that you can use is having a walking foot. Some people's sewing machines come with a walking foot, some people's don't. Mine, because my sewing machine is so old, it came with a regular presser foot and a zipper foot. And so I bought a multi-pack off of Amazon probably uh, almost 10 years ago now, but they still have them on Amazon and I will link below the exact one that I bought so that you can buy it as well if you wanna buy the pack, but it is a universal foot package and I'll show you right now what it looks like so this big one right here is the walking foot and what it does is when you attach it to your sewing machine if you're sewing bulky fabric silky fabric any type of fabric vinyl that slips it walks so if you look at a sewing machine when you're sewing and you're pushing your fabric is sliding under your presser foot this it kind of like goes choo, 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 kind of like a little feet this is a universal pack so it does fit a majority of sewing machines and like I said, my sewing machine, which is a brother, is super old. I got the sewing machine when I was probably 16 or 17 and that was a long time ago. <laughs> so if you want to pick this up to make it a little bit easier for you to sew thicker fabric, and again, like I said, to sew vinyl fabric, I will link it below for you. If it is not something that you wanna buy, then again, like I said, you can just add a little bit of tape to the underside of your presser foot, or you can just sew really, really slow and just be really careful with your stitches. You don't wanna go too fast. You do kinda wanna go slow when you're sewing this together anyways, because it is a small project. And again, like I said, you don't really want to make holes in your bag that are unnecessary because you will see them so I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about this pack and again it does look like this it comes with the case and it does have all these different types of foots for your machine sorry I continue to repeat myself I will link it down below for you if you are interested in buying this as well and no this is not sponsored this is something I literally use so let's get back to sewing this together now this is a walking foot up close and I am going to show you how to add it onto your machine in case you have never actually taken this component apart. It might be a little bit different depending on the machine that you have, but it is pretty standard um, changing it out. It's not too difficult. So this is how you do it. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to take some crafters foam and I'm going to trace out my gingerbread man a bit smaller than the one that I actually need for the bag because I am going to be stuffing this into the gingerbread man. You do not have to use foam. Other times that I've made bags, I've just stuffed it with polyfill and you can leave it completely flat if you want to as well. I'm not gonna be sewing it, I'm just showing you what I'm doing exactly. Now for this part, I am going to be gluing the pieces onto the vinyl and the best thing that you can use is a stick of glue. You can use some Gorilla Glue or E6000 if you want to, however you have to be very careful when you glue that on with that because if you glue too close to the pieces that you are gonna be sewing, your needle will get sticky and it will most likely break and it will be a very difficult time for you. School glue, fabric tack, it works the best and school glue is the cheapest so I recommend using that. Do not be deceived by the time speed of this video. I am going extremely slow and this part of the bag is very, very tedious. If you don't want to do this, you don't have to, but you may lose a piece. You want to do that to the gingerbread and the main piece that has on the candy canes. Then you want to take the larger of the rectangle pieces that you cut out and you want to sew those together, flip it inside out, and then top stitch and then attach it to the back of the gingerbread with two stitches to enforce it and make it a little bit stronger because this is the part that's going to attach your gingerbread to the bag. And these are the magnetic snaps that I'm using to close my bag. You want to make an indentation where you want it to sit and then you want to cut it out with an X-Acto blade and then you want to follow the manual that comes with your magnetic snaps. Mine is put it in, put a thin piece of cardboard, put the metal piece over and then add it. Then you want to sew your gingerbread closed but leave enough space to flip it inside out and tuck in the polyfill or the thick foam that you are using, you do, like I said, want to leave a slit open because you need to shove that in. It is a little bit difficult to flip it inside out. It is a little bit difficult to shove the foam in, but you can do it. I did it. And then the side, I chose to glue with Gorilla Glue instead of Top Stitch over just because I thought I liked how that looked more. These are the other two rectangular pieces that you will need. These are the ones that are going to attach your strap chain or whatever you're using to the purse. You want to fold those and you want to stitch both sides on top and that is all you have to do for that. For the purse construction itself, you want to lay the vinyl right side up, lay the zipper with it faced down and then lay your lining right side touching that. And then you want to pin it or clip it and you want to sew that then you want to open it up and then you want to top stitch it also here you want to shove in those little pieces that you just sewn for your bag clips and you want to add those in as you can see and then you want to repeat that so you want right sides of lining touching and then the wrong sides touching and then the right sides touching and that is exactly how you will lay it down here I am going to attach my gingerbread to the bag and all you want to do is sew that little flap that you have down and making sure to only sew that onto the vinyl. I'm just putting the indent where I want my clip to go for the front of the bag and you want to make sure to only cut through and attach it to the vinyl. Do not attach it to the lining because then you'll have to go back and fix that later on and that is just a hassle you don't want. After you attach your magnetic snap, you want to sew around the perimeter of the bag, leaving the front part of the lining open. You do want to leave the zipper open or you will not be able to flip it inside out. Don't do that by accident. Then you want to pull the lining out of the bag, close that up, and sew it so that you do not have a hole in your lining. Mm -hmm. 
after you sew that down, the bag is done, attach your strap, and here is my reveal. I hope you enjoy. I hope that you enjoyed the reveal of the bag and I hope that you had so much fun making it with me. If you did enjoy your time here, please give me a thumbs up and comment down below what you would like to see next. After today, I am gonna be putting a lot of my focus into the series that I am going to be making. So I'm most likely going to be uploading only once a week and that is going to be on Saturdays. It is going to take a lot of time and effort on what I am doing specifically and I wanna put all of that time into that for a short period of time I am not going to be uploading on Tuesdays. Maybe if I have something small to record or something easy I may post that but I am not going to make any promises because again like I said I do want to put a lot of my time into that and so yeah I hope you guys understand. If you want to stick around and if you'd like to subscribe I would really appreciate it. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching all the way through. I am still so amazed that people are watching these videos and I appreciate you guys so much. You have no idea. If you do want to subscribe again, like I said, I would really love to have you become a part of my little family that I have going on here. So again, like, comment, and subscribe if you want to. I promise to make your time with me as fun and informative as I can. You might have fun with me. You might just think I'm a little bit crazy. Who knows? Either way, thank you for spending your time with me and I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Bye! <gasps> Oops. He's a good boy. He's the star. <laughs> we all know Frodo's the star. So much love. Oh! Okay, yeah. <laughs>